interestingly, there are physiological things that you can do through things like meditation, not surprisingly, that will help you have a more resilient brain. Hello, welcome to Spiritual Real Talk. I'm Megan and I'm so glad that you're here. I'm a little, I'm realizing business casual and I'm not sure why energetically that was what I aligned with when I got dressed to film this, but I think it might be because we're talking about something serious. So we're going to roll with that energy. The serious thing that we're talking about today can't be all funny metaphors. Sometimes we have to dive into topics that are a little heavier because sometimes life can get heavy. So what we are going to dive into today is adversity, stress, navigating with a mindset and with tools that are more intentional, perhaps more empowered, and that ultimately give you on the other side of that thing that you didn't want to happen, something that you can actually use, some some superpower, some element of strength that you maybe didn't have before. So when we see conversations about how to become more resilient, how to have a more resilient brain, you know, interestingly, there are physiological things that you can do through things like meditation, not surprisingly, that will help you have a more resilient brain. And so I want to get into that. And I want to start by just inviting you to look at your relationship with adversity, with the things that you didn't want to happen, with the stress in your life. It is not the most sustainable choice, unfortunately, to try to eliminate all of those things from your world. We can have great boundaries. We can set ourselves up for success. We can, you know, make choices that create a version of life that feels good that feels stable and grounded and safe and secure all those things great and also life and the inevitable uncertainty and impermanence of life and so when those moments show up and the thing that you didn't want to happen happens what is your go-to mental maybe even physical response to that is it a stress response? Is it an automatic fight, flight, freeze, fawn? Maybe that's a whole other video. Is it something that you look at and say, wow, how can I grow from this? How can this be something that I move through, but that on the other side makes me stronger, makes me a more empowered version of myself? And the latter, again, probably not surprisingly, has been shown to be one of the three things that you can do to actually digest your stress positively. That'll be a whole other video because that's a that's a conversation in and of itself. But one component of how you can leverage your stress, leverage the adversity in your life to become a better version of a stronger version of yourself, a more, you know, aligned intuitive version of yourself on the other side is to ask yourself, how can I grow from this? What am I having to move through right now that I didn't want, but that I am being faced with and that I am going to confront and move through and how is that making me stronger? Not unlike, well, maybe this is a metaphor moment. I was going to say this isn't one of those metaphor conversations, but here we are. We've arrived. Not unlike when you are doing some workout or some portion of a workout that you don't like doing. I don't like doing burpees. Anyone with me on that? I don't know who decided this was a great workout. I don't know who realized this, you know, attacked all these different muscle groups and is such an efficient compound movement, but I hate doing burpees. You know why I'll do them though? Because I know I'm getting stronger. So you don't have to like the thing that you are moving through in order to get benefit from it. As you are, again, being confronted with something in your life, the thing that you can do is recognize that this thing doesn't have to be what breaks you. It can be uncomfortable. It can be painful. It can be, you know, not the most fun thing to navigate through. And you can still juice that lemon and get something on the other side that's in service of you ultimately. And 
you know, I think it's really powerful to remember that that process of moving through something, of of growing, right? They're called growing pains for a reason. That process doesn't always feel good and that's okay. And there's a difference between this is uncomfortable, I don't like this, and this isn't what I should be doing, right? Those are two different things. There's a difference between being uncomfortable and being unsafe, for example. So I want you to kind of reflect on that. What is your go-to response to life when you are up against that hand of adversity? And is there room to reflect a little more on how this moment could be a spiritual burpee for you. There's a great line that I love from um, the Sufi poet Rumi. Rumi gets a lot of love on Instagram. Check him out. Um, he's you know just been around for a few casual thousand years. And, and one of his lines that I love so much in a poem is, how will the mirror ever get polished if you are irritated by every rub? Right? So if you consider yourself this mirror and you're moving through this life just washing away the residue of what you are not, of washing through the residue of experiences that you have. If you are irritated every single time you have to do that, how is the mirror ever going to get polished, right? What you go through doesn't define you, it refines you. I had that thought the other day. I really liked it. What you go through doesn't define you. It refines you. It clarifies you. It gives you that opportunity to say, okay, I didn't like this. This is hard. This is maybe painful. This is growing pains galore. And I know that doing this workout, I know that leaning in to this thing that feels uncomfortable will yield on the other side a version of me that will be capable of more, that has grown more, that can reach new heights, that can lift heavier things, literally and figuratively, you know? And that's where, I'm not going to say it starts to be fun, but that's where there stops being a little bit of that resistance to growth, a little bit less of that resistance to avoid because maybe I haven't said it on here, but I remind myself and students and clients this all the time. If you do not navigate what's happening in your mind, what's happening in your heart, it will show up in your life to be worked out there. So sometimes when the thing shows up in life, it's it's life school and it's the class that we need to take. It's the lesson that we need to learn. And so as you are confronted with that, I just invite you to lean in a little more. Notice where there is that tendency to run away, to avoid, to shut down, to withdraw, to fight against it, to resist it. And I urge you to just practice leaning in, in that more reflective way and say, wow, this might be painful. This might hurt a bit here. You know, this might be one of those growing pain moments. And I'm going to choose to keep polishing my mirror. Even if, even if it doesn't feel great, even if I don't love the workout, I'm going to keep polishing that mirror. And then notice, notice how you start to perhaps not find yourselves in the same situations over and over again, because you're learning those lessons, because you're doing the work because you're letting yourself be stretched and grow into these new versions of yourself, right? The goal isn't to eliminate all of it from your life. It's to get better at polishing the mirror. So I hope that resonates. I hope you take that with you. I am loving all of your comments on these videos. So please, please, if you haven't already, drop a comment, say hi, Let me know what you want to talk about on here. If you have any questions, if you aren't already subscribed, please hit that subscribe button so that you know every time another one of these videos drops, Um, like this video, share it with your crew. If you think it would resonate, Um, it means the world that you are here and I'm excited to see you next time. And in the meantime, be well, sending you lots of love.